to explain to you why symmetry is not only beautiful, it's also useful. Symmetry is the key to understand, understanding some of the most secret, subtle properties of nature. <coughs> Architects and artists have long appreciated symmetry. There's something not only elegant, but restful about the Taj Mahal. It's left-right symmetric. The left wing of the Taj Mahal is a mirror image. Of the and, and that symmetry is definitely part of the beauty of the building. And we like to, to decorate our buildings with patterns, like this tiling from the Alhambra Palace in Spain. This is a different kind of symmetry, rather than mi mirror symmetry. Uh, it's periodic symmetry. If we move one of the stars from one place to another, the pattern repeats itself. But nature also uses symmetry. This modern butterfly, like the Taj Mahal, is mirror symmetric. The left wing is almost a, a <coughs> perfect copy of the right wing. And when the butterfly closes its wings, they match very nearly exactly. Other animals don't have mirror symmetry. This nautilus seashell has a spiral, a right-handed spiral as we go into the centre. If we looked at this in a mirror, it would be a left-handed spiral. It would not be mirror symmetric. In the world of geology, crystals also have a symmetry. And these symmetries reflect the underlying atomic structure. In the 19th century, physicists used the mathematics of symmetry to prove that there are exactly 230 different types of crystals in 14 families. Salt is a poor cousin of diamond. It's in the same family. And the cubical structure of salt, which is mirror symmetric, is a reflection of the underlying atomic structure. Salt is made up of sodium and chlorine atoms in a periodic array, like the, the tiling in the Alhambra Palace. And it's a cubical array, which is ref uh, symmetric on the reflection of the mirror. And the, the crystals that we see reflect this underlying symmetry. At a deeper level, in the 20th century, the first half of the 20th century, physicists were trying to understand math at the subatomic level. And this man, Paul Dirac, discovered an equation that describes how electrons behave. He got the Nobel Prize for his work. Many physicists think Dirac's equation is one of the most beautiful equations ever written down. Here it is. <laughs> the symmetries of this equation allow Dirac to study the properties of electrons. Electrons, of course, have a negative electric charge, but they also have another property that we call spin. We can think of an electron as being like a little sphere spinning on an axis. This electron is spinning to the left. But in studying the solutions of his equation, Dirac found that there was a mirror image of this. If we reflect this electron in the mirror, we get an electron spinning to the right. And that was also a solution of Dirac's equation. He was a right hand spinning electron. But he found more. He found we can also make the electron spin to the right by taking a movie of it and running the movie backwards. <laughs> and Dirac, Dirac did that. He found this was a solution of his equation. And he found a particle which had the same property of the electron, the same mass, the same spin as the right handed electron, but he noticed something very strange. This particle had a positive electron charge, positive electric charge. Dirac had discovered antimatter. <coughs> Nowadays, we call this a positron. A few years later, a few years after uh, Dirac's prediction, the positron was actually found in cosmic rays. So the solutions of Dirac's equation had this beautiful symmetry to them. His equation was like a butterfly. If the left wing is an electron, the right wing is a positron. But no one had ever looked at nature this way before Dirac. It was the mathematics that led him to this view. Before Dirac, people had only ever seen in experiments, they'd only ever seen electrons. So the experiments looked something like this. To Dirac, this is what the experiments looked like. And it's obvious, you just have to say the right wing should be there. But if we want to study antimatter in, in the laboratory, we can't rely on the vagaries of cosmic rays. We need to build a time mirror. This is part of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, the European Particle Facility just outside Geneva. And antimatter is regularly created in machines like this um, in CERN and at other places throughout the world. Here, for example, the green paths are electrons and the red <laughs> are positrons. And we see here a positron being created and spiraling inwards in a left handed spiral, created out of pure energy. I consider myself privileged to have learned the mathematics of symmetry from this man. His name is Peter Pings. He's at the uh, University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And 50 years ago, he predicted another particle using symmetry, the elusive Higgs boson. And just two days ago, CERN announced that they may have seen preliminary evidence that the Higgs boson, the Higgs boson is there. And we should know for sure within the next 12 months. So watch this space. Theoretical <laughs> physics, in particular particle physics, is a fascinating area of research. 
The symmetry is not only beautiful, it's also useful. Thank <laughs> you.